Hello people, in this video let us get started with human anatomy. In MBBS what are you reading as human anatomy? Basically what is anatomy? It is the st uh, structure of the body. Here you are reading human anatomy. So it is structure of the human body. Okay. So anatomy uh, guys is where you are studying about uh, the anatomy of the heart or uh, uh, the liver or, or the a lot of things okay anatomy is the entire nerves veins bones everything and anatomy refers to something that's normal okay when it comes to this terminology called morphology morphology is the way it appears you know where way it appears okay so that there, there can be cadaveric anatomy so under cadaveric anatomy means you're going to use the dead embalmed preserved okay they will put some uh, what uh, formalin right and they will try to preserve the uh, dead body so there you will read the cadaveric anatomy so if you're holding a bone <clears throat> and you're trying to understand the bones anatomy that will be called as osteology so so many terminologies here for you so guys uh, what is osteology osteology is the study of bones very good uh, everything else not important here living anatomy how will you check the anatomy of a living person if you have to look at uh, my anatomy you'll have to inspect me you can touch and see palpate right so inspection palpation so those are the ways of your you checking your patient you will inspect the patient you will palpate you will percuss you will auscultate uh, auscultation i'm not sure comes under uh, anatomy is all auscultation also yes so basically using the stethoscope uh, on, uh, on a living person you can know the anatomy of the living person okay so that is living anatomy then you can do endoscopy bronchoscopy gastroscopy you can take x-rays uh, Electromyography, that's for the muscle, etc. Anyways, don't break your head much about that. Uh, embryology is what? It is developmental anatomy. That is how the embryo becomes a, a human being, right? So that is very important. Uh, it's not very, yes. It's very complicated though, uh, this embryology thing. Then what is histology? Histology is the microscopic anatomy. If you see under the microscope, what will you see? That is the histology, the cell structure, tissue structure, etc. So this is how the pancreas appears under the microscope. This is the histology, okay? What is this? This is a kidney, right? Here there is a carcinoma of the kidney, renal cell carcinoma. So this is uh, how you will explain how it looks is the morphology and it will be the gross morphology. If you look at it under the microscope, whatever you, you, you will see is the microscopic morphology or histology. Okay, histology. So did you understand? Morphology is more how it appears. Morphology is how it appears. Okay, anatomy is the actual structure. Now, there is another terminology called a surface anatomy, guys. Surface anatomy means uh, if you want to know in me, uh, where is my parotid gland? So, here you'll have to see the parotid gland. You'll have to draw it on the surface. You'll have to draw it on the face and show where the parotid gland is. So, that is surface anatomy. This is why is this important? Surface anatomy is basically you should know the uh, a deeper part of the body in relation to the skin surface. So if you're doing some clinical practice, you will know what exactly structure is there, there and what are the boundaries, right? And what operation, surgical operation, uh, how to approach, etc. Okay, then coming to imaging studies that you know, radiology. Okay, guys, who's the father of uh, medicine? Hippocrates, okay? Hippocrates. Okay, guys, so some nomenclature are very important in an anatomy. Look at this. Um, what is anatomical position you should know? When a person is standing uh, straight, okay, with his, uh, he's looking forward and both arms are on the sides of the body, palm facing forward. This is very important. The palm facing forward, this is the anatomical position. So this is the anatomical position. Uh, this is important. The palm is facing forward, okay. So that is the anatomical position. So this is the supine position, just sleeping position is the supine position and uh, if you are sleeping on your belly, then it will become the prone position. Guys, what are you looking at? You are looking at basics of anatomy, okay? So what is this? This is the lithotomy position. So this is usually do, uh, used in uh, obstetrics, gynecology. So what is the position guys in obstetrics? Lithotomy, very good. Now let us go to the planes of the body, very important guys, look at this. The planes of the body, um, here what are you seeing? This one which is dividing the body into anterior and posterior. That's a coronal plane. Coronal plane is going to divide your body into anterior and posterior. This is important. Sagittal one is here. It is going to divide the body into right and left. Okay. This is what you have to remember here. Always you're looking at the patient. Okay. So when I write right here, it is right side of the patient okay and the left is left side of the patient though it is your right hand is uh, here right your right hand is here this is your right hand side but this is the left of the patient okay so in anatomy you should understand very important to understand that uh, when we say right and left 
we are telling that we are looking at the patient and seeing okay and even the x-rays or uh, ct scans etc so the sagittal uh, plane or the median uh, plane they have referred here will divide the uh, body into right and left and there is one more thing called as transverse plane which is this one it's just going to divide into upper and lower okay there are some terminologies you should know guys like um this is um proximal part of the uh, of your lower limb right and this is distal okay proximal distal that means whatever is near to you is proximal whatever is far away from you is distal okay then uh, let us say this is the middle right so this is medial part and whatever is outside that will be the lateral okay so medial lateral okay these are some other terminologies you should know medial lateral lateral okay so <clears throat> look at this if this is a human being in the anatomical position okay anatomical position means how will the hand be like this the right hand so the thumb will be here okay so the thumb is actually lateral okay and the little finger is actually medial so just uh, put your hand in um, anatomical position you can see the thumb is lateral and the your right hand the thumb is lateral even on the left hand the thumb is lateral remember and your little finger is medial to you okay then you should know some other terminology is called as ipsilateral and contralateral okay look at this look at this uh, human being this is the right hand this is the left hand okay so right hand right leg these are ipsilateral on the same side okay right hand and left hand are contralateral on the other side okay ipsilateral means same side contralateral means on the other side so did you get it guys there is something called as anterior see this is my anterior this is my posterior anterior posterior okay you can also say this is dorsal ventral okay ventral is nothing but front and dorsal is at the back so anterior posterior what else did you see there is something called as proximal and distal right near and far kind of things and then there is some one more terminology cranial and caudal caudal is towards the tail kind of a thing cranial is your head okay cranial caudal cranial is also called as a rostral or something so cranial or rostral towards the head okay it's like superior and the caudal is towards the tail you can say inferior look at this uh, flexion extension okay now you just hold your hand like this and bring it towards you okay so that time the angle will reduce isn't it this angle will reduce this is flexion and extension is so you're again increasing the angle that will become extension so it is between you and that part okay so that angle if it reduces flexion if that angle increases extension this you can do for every part of your body okay see let me flex my head okay you see if i flex my head i want to flex my head i'm bringing it towards my chest flexing so the angle is reducing then i look back okay i bend back what is happening the angle between me and that part of the body is increasing so that is extension so flex your head extend your head flex your head extend your head so did you understand flexion and extension here they have explained flexion see this is correct flexion you are bringing it towards yourself right and the angle between you and that part of the body is decreasing so that is flexion and here they have shown extension where the angle is more between you and that part of the body okay flexion extension you understood look at this abduction abduction means that you are taking that part away from yourself okay so this is abduction it's going away from the central part right so that is abduction and you bring that part uh, again towards yourself you bring it medial that then it becomes adduction so abduction and adduction so these are some things you should know some other terminologies guys uh, this is different here look at this whenever you put itis right it becomes inflammation okay like appendicitis tonsillitis it is inflammation remember inflammation can happen because of um a, it is not just because of infection it can happen because of many other things okay inflammation can happen because of um, uh, autoimmune causes trauma edema lot of things can lead to inflammation okay itis means inflammation okay so itis if you are adding itis conjunctivitis conjunctivitis and hepatitis so all that is itis inflammation of that part okay hepatitis will be like inflammation of the liver conjunctivitis will be like uh, inflammation of your cornea sorry conjunctiva right so but that, there is one more term here called as ascites okay a s c i t e s remember ascites is a different uh, terminology a s a s i 
ITES. Okay, as ITES, you can see it is ITES. ITES is not ITIS. It is not inflammation. What is ascites? Ascites is actually fluid in your peritoneal cavity. That becomes ascites. Okay, too much fluid builds up in your abdomen in the belly. That is what is called as ascites. But this is not same as your inflammation. Ascites. Uh, Itis is like hepatitis, neuritis, arthritis, tonsillitis, etc. There's just uh, some terminologies they are trying to introduce to you in this book. So, anyways, understand symptoms is something. Uh, symptoms is something that the patient comes with. Like he'll say, "I have pain here. I have uh, um, uh, vomiting. I have diarrhea. All that really symptoms. But what the patient presents with? Okay, what are signs? Signs are things that you, as a doctor, will see. You will see that he's having tachycardia. That means his heart is beating very fast. This is something that uh, you will observe. So that becomes a sign. Signs that you will see. The patient will not say, I have ascites, right? That is something that you will detect. So, that becomes sign, okay? So, did you understand some basic terminologies, guys? Is it becoming too much? So, guys, there is like a whole dictionary of medical terms, right? So, uh, this much is enough for now as a basic introduction to anatomy, okay? Uh, so, we will meet you in the next video. Bye-bye.